WPTV's Matt Sesney has followed Florida's insurance crisis for more than a year, and I sat down with him to go over what homeowners need to know in the wake of Milton. Yeah, so the first thing I think that talking to agents and some insurance experts about this after the storm is the first thing is to try to get a good accounting of what damage you have to your house. And the best way to do that is really with the cell phone. Take some pictures, take some video. Okay. Uh, typically, if... Uh, like when the state sets up insurance villages or facilitates insurance companies to come into communities, it's the best way to move a claim forward quickly if you have some pictures and videos uh, to show to the insurance companies okay. uh, right away. You could also email them to the insurance companies right away. But, you know, try to get those claims in as quickly as possible so that you can get that process moving. What else do you want people to be mindful of in terms of what their payout may be because we were under yeah. A hurricane so, throughout the entire right, state. Right. So when a hurricane warning trick uh, checks in in the state, all new rules start applying to insurance policies. And the most important one people need to be aware of is that deductible. Your policy goes from a normal homeowner's policy deductible to Typical the hurricane. Two, five percent. The hurricane deductible, yeah. which is 2, 5, or even 10 yeah. percent. And, and that'll apply to any damage. Even if the tornado caused damage, it was the result of the hurricane and the hurricane warning and the hurricane deductible is kicked in. But the change here, because we were under hurricane warning statewide, is that right. it's just that. It applies, yeah. Once, we're on, once one county in the state is under a warning, the whole state flips over to hurricane deductibles. There's so many times that we, after a big, big storm, people getting ripped off. Hey, I'll mm -hmm. fix your roof. I'll do right. it for X. Don't worry about a written contract. I'll, right. I'll be your adjuster. What do right. you tell people? So there's a lot of pressure. People are getting pulled in different directions here, right? A lot of homeowner insurance policies do require, if you have damage that is causing more damage to your house, you are required to try and mitigate that with a temporary fix or a temporary uh, solution, yeah. such as a hole in your roof. you got to cover that so no more water gets in. So there's a lot of contractors and people going around these neighborhoods knocking on doors. Insurance experts and state officials are warning people don't be in a rush to sign anything. Especially don't sign over your insurance rights to a third party. It could create a whole mess of problems. It could really stall your claim. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, try and, and fix the things immediately just to prevent more damage and then deal with your insurance company. Right. Make sure they're licensed. You would never do right. anything uh, that's not in writing. Tell them to right. hit the road if they say they will. Right. Be and very check it out. Be very suspicious of trucks that pull up that have no writing whatsoever on it. No license on there, no name or nothing. Be real suspicious of that. We'll be covering a lot more of this with you in the coming days, but any final mm. best uh, tip of, besides what you've talked yeah, about? Yeah, so FEMA is starting to come into yeah. some of these neighborhoods and communities now. And so uh, people may have some misconceptions about FEMA. So typically what FEMA does is they will come in and offer emergency money to homeowners. That is usually usually only $750, but it's no strings attached. People can use that money for wherever they need, if it's temporary shelter or any kind of fixes. If it's gonna be a big amount that FEMA's gonna give to people, there will be strings attached in the form of low interest loans. FEMA does not just typically go out and start giving away large amounts of money. It's usually through loans for big amounts. Now our round table with WPTV political analyst, Brian Crowley, of course, families, communities and political leadership locally and statewide being tested in ways uh, that are rare, thankfully, but these disasters as they pile up. Talk about those challenges based on your experience that political leadership will face to get us through to the other side of this crisis. Well, if there's one thing that uh, many, many voters in Florida are going to be focusing on, it's going to be what's happening as a result of these two hurricanes that have hit us and hopefully no more for the rest mm -hmm. of this hurricane season. And there's already a great deal of concern about the insurance industry in the state, as uh, uh, Ch Channel 5 has done a fantastic job of reporting on the issues. And I think that um, uh, there's going to be a lot more talk about that. The Senate president has said that she expects uh, that it's going to become a really big issue in the uh, legislative session that starts next year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there's going to be a lot more attention paid on insurance issues and uh, the kind of cor correcting the problems that we continue to have with the high rates in insurance, weak insurance companies. Uh, there's some suggestion that uh, this, these storms may cause some insurance companies to collapse, which just leaves homeowners struggling.
Republicans who have authored a lot of the legislation now in place argue, give it time. We're encouraging more private insurers. We're cutting down on fraud and lawsuits, frivolous lawsuits. It'll help, but you got to give it time. At what point do voters say, I I'm out of money and time? And, and, and then it becomes something where the dynamic of that debate has to change to a different level in Tallahassee. Well, you know, I started covering the legislature and the governor's yeah. office in 1980. So, I, you know, I can say that in all those years, the legislature and the, and the governor's office, whether it was Democrat or Republican, uh, overall has done a poor job in regulating insurance. Uh, that's part of the reason we have such a weak in insurance mm. market today. Uh, I, I, I'm not a professional on how insurance should go, sure. but there's been some talk that says that maybe citizens' insurance, uh, which is run by the state, should be an all-wind insurance and that it should be similar to flood insurance mm. where it just becomes a statewide, everybody's in it, uh, uh, windstorm, and then let private insurers deal with fire and, and those other issues. And Brian, you've covered, uh, as you said, politics for a long, long time, and you've seen the landscape literally change in this state. And, and the debate always happens. It happened after Andrew, and there were real changes in building clo uh, codes generated out of Andrew. In a state of 22 going on 23 million people, what about the debate? Do you see any fundamental shift on where we build, how we build, how high we build? You hear it in pockets of the state, but in terms of a statewide come to Jesus building code discussion about how we fortify ourselves even better. Is that too much to expect or ask? How do you see that dynamic playing out after well, all your years up there? You know, Hurricane Andrew was in 1992 and it was one of the worst hurricanes to hit this state. And uh, we did nothing. Mm -hmm. we, 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 I'll correct myself, we improved some building codes. We, but overall... Miami-Dade did, but other parts sure. of the state didn't adopt You those. know, and, and now the legislature in the last few years has passed laws limiting what local governments can do to control uh, development in their communities. Uh, look, Florida has a very, very long history going back to the 1920s that uh, whatever developers want, developers get. And unfortunately, as we've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, we're building, you know, far too close to the water. We're, we just, we're making classic mistakes. And, you know, frankly, one of the things I question, uh, you know, do we really have enough building inspectors in this state? You know, you see lots of, well, mm -hmm. I use West Palm Beach as an example of these giant high rises going up. I don't know what kind of building inspectors look at these things as they're being built. What, is the, what do the studies say about storm surge hitting, up, hitting West Palm Beach or the rest of the county for that matter? I just think there's a lot of stuff that's taken for granted and we, we're learning our lessons the hard way. And you do not think uh, the latest tragedies, Helene, Milton and all that we're seeing here are enough to really make substantial changes here, at least as we sit here today? Oh, I think they'll make changes. I think just like they did after Hurricane Andrew in 92 and over the years, but most of them turn out to be minor changes as long as we continue to allow development far too close to the shore, as long as we, you know, keep building on barrier islands, which are intended to be, oh, barriers, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. The, um, I, I don't see any dramatic change that will last for a long time. Brian, uh, thank you. It's a sober analysis, but one we all have to pay attention to. And if we're going to have a debate and not end up at the same place again and again and again. As always, appreciate your closing thoughts to be coming up in just a moment.